Throughout my time in the industry, there's one particular question that has come up time and time again. Now that you have your Rapsodo, your Blast, or whatever other crazy technology that you have, what do you need to do to get started? And that's what today's video is all about. In today's game, there's so many people, teams, organizations, and other programs that have begun to see the value of this technology. They all understand that collecting and utilizing this data, while also understanding this data, equals power. But there's a divide between those who are successful with it and those who are not. And the main reason for that is some group's ability to take action. But it's tough, especially when you're just getting started, to see that light at the end of the tunnel. So that's what today's video is all about. It serves as my guidebook for getting started implementing new technology at any level. To me, this process can be broken down into four equally important parts. The first one being the data collection phase. The second part is when you begin to analyze and interpret this data. The third part is when you start to implement a full-scale plan. And the fourth part is being able to evaluate and automate your processes. Let's jump into number one. The first step is the data collection phase. With any new gadget, there's a period of time where you simply need to just begin using it, see how it works, think about new ways on how to apply it, and then also see how it fits best in your schedule. But there is a process between getting that new toy and becoming an expert at it, and that process takes time. My suggestion to you is to start planning around your current schedule how you could begin to implement that new technology, and then stick to that plan. Make it a routine to have the Rapsodo and the Edgertronic out every single day, and work at that around the clock. The first step is all about getting into a habit of actually using this technology, and creating your database to be drawn from later. So now that you have your database created, and you think that you have enough to start trying to piece together what all of it means, great. Now it's time to learn. Search online what other people are doing and how other people have had success using that technology. Call up a colleague in your network and see what has worked best for them. Get familiar with the processes that other people have used. And then start to make a list of things you'd like to do with it. Start small, like analyzing one player's arsenal to begin and then start working with that athlete. See what works, what doesn't. This will be different for every program and for every single athlete, so don't get discouraged if it doesn't click right away. But once you've mastered that, then you can begin working with your second athlete. The goal of this step is to continue to grow and to get more comfortable utilizing this technology. So now that you've had success implementing this with a single athlete, or even maybe a couple, what does it take to start implementing this on a team-wide scale? Plan out what this process looks like in your organization. Begin to get into a routine of implementing this technology and then see the full-scale results. And if you're interested in how I'd recommend going about this process with your pitchers, check out either one of my pitch design process tutorials. You'll see links on screen now and in the description down below. Now we're on to the last step. You've gone through an entire year, a season, or at least some period of time to begin to get into a rhythm. Now, it's time to step back and reflect. What went well and what didn't? How can you improve your processes? This is arguably the most important step, because if you continue just doing what you're doing, you will eventually plateau and see less gains. You need to continuously reflect and see how you can get better. Otherwise, the game will pass you. Can you spend this off-season learning a little code to help you analyze some amount of data quicker? Or can someone else on your team help take a portion of the work because they're better in that area? Or can you even hire someone new into that role? The point of this whole video isn't to hand you the secret formula. It's to get you thinking about what steps you need to take to implement something new wherever you're at right now. This should help serve as a general outline of my recommended process for any project, big or small. And that's it for today's video, guys. I know today's video could spur a lot of questions, so please leave a comment down below with any questions or suggestions for a future video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, or you just want to help out the channel. 
and subscribe for more weekly baseball animations posted every Wednesday.